What's up everybody, it's Connor from Unscripted, back again with another video. In today's video, we have some CDL and Challengers news and updates to talk about, and as always, we will be doing it off the script. Before we hop into the video though, don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoy, leave a comment as well with your thoughts on some of what we're going to talk about today, and subscribe to the channel as well if you are enjoying all the content and looking for more of it. This is now day four of my goal to upload every day in June, so there's plenty of days to go, but... I hope you enjoy the videos, and if you do, I appreciate all that stuff, so let's hop right into it. I'm going to kick things off with some stats here from the guys at Breaking Point. So the hard point kill death leaders on every map. Checkmate, we have Draza. Garrison, we have Simp, not really a surprise. They're really good on that map. Moscow, we have Hydra, which I know is a small sample size, but I'm kind of surprised it's an SMG that leads the way on that map. It just seems to be like a more AR-friendly map, and I don't know, I would have thought maybe... A guy like a Formal or a Dashy or any Celium, one of the top ARs, a Clayster, just somebody to have like a, a higher KD than that. 1.33 seems kind of low, and just the fact that it's an SMG surprised me a little bit, so hats off to him. Raid, a 1.76 for Simp. That's absolutely crazy to me how high that is, uh, especially a map like Raid where a lot of teams are good at it. So just for him to be that high of a KD is impressive to me. I'd love to know what second place is. I wonder how far behind they are. And then Apocalypse. Not surprising that it's an SMG, you know, it's definitely an SMG friendly map, but, and it's not surprising, I mean, it's a little bit surprising it's Pristini, I, I know I'm not surprised that he has a lot of kills on Apocalypse just because of how fast he plays and how small the map is, but the fact that his KD is so high as well, that's really impressive for him for sure. Just thought that was interesting, throw it in there in the beginning of the video. Now the, uh, the biggest piece of news from this video, of course, Seattle Surge have made it official, Decimate will be replacing Looney in the starting lineup decimate coming from the challenger scene a really really good player with a lot of potential pending league approval he will be in their starting lineup for this coming week so good stuff for him big uh big moment for his career we'll see what he can make him make the most of it he said he got his opportunity got my opportunity with a team with incredible potential let's see what i can do he was quoting his own tweet from last year basically saying about how people were complaining about the chances they get and they shouldn't be complaining you know any chance they get they should be willing to take and willing to jump at it and that's definitely you know the attitude he had all along the way and now he is ready to turn that you know dream into a reality and perform well for the surge maybe get them going enough to find their way into champs they're on the outside looking in right now but still some time to turn things around and get into that eighth spot so we'll see what they can do and we'll see what he can do moving over to looney of course gotta have his reaction he says good luck to the squad i'm confident they can turn the season around with desi as for me, I don't know what's next. Last couple of weeks, life has been stressful, so thinking about just streaming and resetting. And it was no surprise to me. I mean, he had a ton of players, casters, whoever, all throughout his mentions, just wishing him the best, thanking him for all their time together, and telling him to keep his head up that, you know, they appreciate all he's done for them and the scene and whatever else. I mean, so many people replied. One of the most common replies, I thought I had a Maven reply here that I must have lost, but he said that, you know, he, he echoed a common message that Looney should be, or he, he would be a really good coach if he wanted to go that route. You know, everybody sort of appreciates the mind that Looney has for Call of Duty, even throughout this season. You know, the entire time that people were saying, you know, why is Looney not benched yet? He's not playing that well. The response was always, yeah, but he brings a lot to the table beyond that, you know, with his in-game leadership abilities, with his intelligence of the maps and the rotations and everything. So definitely could see him uh, moving over to a coaching role whether that's for Seattle or somebody else he does echo that here as well he did a stream yesterday which I thought was pretty neat just sort of answering all kinds of questions about anything you know I was in there for a little bit and he was talking about like World War II and other games so it was a cool stream but he said that he is open to coach the Seattle Surge if they want it I don't know why they wouldn't want it personally he has you know he knows how those guys play he has the chemistry with them I'm sure him and Joey Nubs he could work together very well and get this team playing a little bit more to their potential and sort of make the most of this roster change and see if they can get this roster on a roll and get them qualified for champs now moving on to the challenger side of all of this so decimate was on the fantastic four team alongside methods fire and scraps or scraps slacked he will now be replaced by gintroid who was originally going to team with sib and mac and fire i guess things got changed around there when they didn't qualify and all that but he will now be on the Fantastic Four team. Also on the Challengers front, uh, the, the cup for this weekend has been canceled uh, due to Mother's Day. So 
that is, I guess, good news for the Challengers guys. They seem pretty happy about it in the comments. And then he did say, just a general follow-up. We overcorrected from feedback last year wherein folks communicated a desire for more events. We hammered in a relentless schedule for 2021. Next season, we'll have more breathing room. That's good to hear. I know a lot of the players have sort of said this season, this challenger season has been really tough on their mental health and just sort of their their attitude and their morale playing all the time. It's just a constant grind for them. And, you know, obviously not as luxurious as the pro side of things is. So it's been tough on those guys. Good to see that they have some breathing room and some breaks coming, you know, even if it's not till next year. But the rest of this year, they will have a couple of breaks too. You know, this, the end of May and the beginning of July. So there's some breaks in there, but still a pretty pretty nasty schedule and i hope you know hopefully those guys can handle that as well as they can moving over to another challengers player hamza formerly known as glow frosty of the new york subliners academy he says no one understands the life of a main constantly overlooked and doubted hope only hope to make the league is expansion sometimes i just don't know what else i need to do to break through just going to continue to be the best got to be undeniable this is 100 percent accurate and it's got to be a struggle to be a main ar in the challenger scene because the main ARs in the league, it's just, there's only 12 spots, and they're all so good. Like, the worst main AR is probably either Accuracy, Shawnee, or Assault, I would say. And, I mean, those guys are all playing well. It's not like any of them are playing terribly right now. You know, some of them were, but they got going, and none of them really, I wouldn't say any of them are bad. And there's just so many good main ARs in the challenger scene. I can think of Frosty. I can think of Tom Gravity. I can think of Timmy Phantoms maybe jordan general so there's a bunch of main ars that they just really isn't there's not a path for them to the league right now unless there would be more teams next year so the only other option would be moving into a flex role which they obviously would be a very tough transition to make at the professional level or they wait until one of those guys retires or there's an expansion so i'm sure it is very tough on their mental just knowing that no matter what they can really do it never seems to be enough because there's just such a limited chance for them to be able to break into the league in the first place just want to share that because i do see where frosty is coming from and there's he's not the only one like i said tom gravity i think is one of the best amateurs period him not being in the league is just criminal to me but where's he going to get in i mean there's really just not that many spots open unless there would be expansion or guys start retiring so that's the way that's going to be for these main ars and the challenger scene and hopefully they can get more opportunities you know however it comes whether it's retirements expansion or whatever while we're on the topic of challengers, Breaking Point finally put out some stats. You know, they had to hand count a lot of these statistics, count kill feeds, so it took them a while. Shout out to them. I think Easy Mac does the most of it or all of it. So the overall KDs, like I was just talking about, Frosty, second with a 1.19. Timmy Phantoms leading the way with a 1.22. And also, I thought this was interesting. Look at Saints. So he has a 1.19, which is tied for second, but. Everybody on the list except Saints and maybe Pentagram, I'm not sure about him. They all are AR players. So the fact that Saints has the second highest KD in the challenger scene when everyone else or almost everyone else in the top 10 uses an AR, he is of course using an SMG. That is so impressive. He has been incredibly consistent for the NYSL Academy team throughout this entire season. I just, I don't understand how he is not on a pro roster. I look at a team like Paris going with Temp. When Saints was sitting there, it was questionable to me. A team like Florida going with Havoc when Saints was sitting there. So there was a lot of questionable moves. Um, finally, Seattle bucked the trend, and rather than just picking up a former pro, they decided to go to an amateur. It wasn't Saints, but Decimate, you know, he was right up there with Saints in terms of the best amateur SMG players. So, you know, no hate there from me. That was a great move as well. But just some of these teams could really benefit from a guy like Saints on their roster. And him not being there is just super surprising to me. Look at a team like LAG as well. You know, when they got rid of Vivid, Saints was sitting right there. They go a different route and make their team slower. We'll see how it works out. But he could help a lot of teams for sure. That just stood out to me. He's the only, he's one or two of the only non-main ARs or non-AR players on that entire list. Also, they put out the search stats, which were interesting to me because as I, the point I was hammering home throughout a lot of my challengers videos was how good the UT crew team was at Search and Destroy. And look at that, Major Maniac and Phantoms over a 1.6 KD. Those, of course, the two AR players for the UT Crew Challengers team. Yee's right behind them, 141. He is one of their players as well. And then Rex, still in Rex down there at 7 with a 1.25, also on that team. So it's crazy to me how that one team had four of the, all four of them were in the top seven of the overall KD in season three. So impressive, impressive stuff for them. They are. A phenomenal search team, a phenomenal challengers team in general, and I'm really excited to watch the uh, challengers season three playoffs. I'm, I think they kick off tonight. I'm not 100% sure, but that was, I think, the plan. So we'll see if that ends up working out that way. But 
yeah, that stat just really jumped off the page at me. And finally, a cool little thing I found, or I'm, a lot of us saw. So Venom here, we'll start at the beginning. Maybe. Yeah. May 17th, 2015. Got my hat and controller signed by Optic Nadeshot and Optic Hex. Thanks, guys. There you see Nade there. Hex on the controller and Nade on the hat as well. Venom, of course, now playing for the Los Angeles Thieves, the team that Nadeshot owns. And then Venom replied to himself. He said, life's pretty crazy sometimes. And Nadeshot replied and said, this is crazy to me. Talk about things coming full circle. I just thought that was really interesting to see how, you know, someone that probably looked up to, and I guarantee he looked up to Hex and Nadeshot and those guys when he was a younger player trying to break in even six years ago. Now he's playing for one of the guys he looked up to. That's just really cool to me. I thought that was worth sharing. So that's going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like down below, a comment as well with your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel as well if you are enjoying the content and looking for more of it in your subscriber box. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good day today, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.